Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss circuits and graphs. In particular, we're going to focus on Eulerian circuits and Hamiltonian circuits. We're going to start in this video with Eulerian circuits. The definition of an Eulerian circuit in a graph G is a circuit that visits each edge exactly once and starts and ends at the same vertex. So to illustrate this definition, I'm gonna draw a picture. First picture, we'll consider a real simple graph. This is just a cycle. And to find a Eulerian circuit of this, we just need to find a circuit that visits each edge exactly once and it has to start and end at the same vertex. So we could take this as the starting vertex and then we can just go through each of these vertices and edges. And we finish at that vertex. We can also consider some more complicated graphs. So for example, this one right here. So this one, we could do an Eulerian circuit where we start here at this vertex and we go around like this. So I drew the path a little bit away from the vertices and edges there so we can see things more clearly but think of that path as actually on those vertices and edges. Another path we could have done is this one here. So in this case, we went around like this and then we We made an H shape with it. So these would all be Eulerian circuits, what I drew here. And these Eulerian circuits that I drew, you can think of them as sequences of vertices and edges. And you can write the sequence like V0, E0, V1, E1, up to VK, EK, and then some VK plus one, where the VK plus one is equal to V0. So your sequence of vertices and edges, it starts and ends with the same vertex. And for each I, the edge EI just consists of the vertices VI and VI plus one. And the requirement is that each edge in the graph has to occur exactly once in this sequence. And the other requirement was already taken care of that VK plus one equals V zero. So we can think of the Eulerian circuits as these sequences and we consider some of these sequences the same Eulerian circuit. So we'll treat two sequences as the same Eulerian circuit if they pass through the edges in the same or in an opposite cyclic order. So what does that mean? Well, let's consider some examples of the same Eulerian circuit. So up here, here is the Eulerian circuit. Think of that path I drew as on the vertices and edges. I've just drawn a little further away because it's a little clearer that way. And here is the same Eulerian circuit.
so as long as it passes through the edges in the same cyclic order. So if we listed our edges, we give them names like E. So we can call this top one, E here, F, G, H, I, J. So one, one order that we can write for this Eulerian circuit would be E, F, J, H. Oh, whoops, sorry, E, F, G, H, and then I, J. So E, F, G, H, I, J, that's going clockwise around. And any other clockwise one is the same Eulerian circuit. So for example, G, H, I, J, E, F, that would be the same Eulerian circuit. And counterclockwise would also be the same. So they all corresponding to the same cycle of edges. So we might have some repeated vertices in there like we see over here. So another one that would be the same would be F, E, J, I, and uh, H, G. So you can also go in the counterclockwise direction and that's still the same Eulerian circuit. And we can look at the one over here. So the one over here, if we look at the outside one, this outside one, we could start it here, go around the outside. And that would be the same as if I started here and went around the outside. Or if I started here and I went around the outside like this, that would be the same. And think of all these as actually on the graph. I just draw them further and further away so they don't have so many crossings and it's easier to see things. Now the one on the inside, that one is a different Eulerian circuit. So when we list the vertices, so if we think of the vertices over here, let's give them names like A, B, C, D. Over here, we'll say E, F, G, H. So the outer Eulerian circuits up there. So we have some outer ones, we have some inner ones. The outer ones were like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, or B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, for example. We could also have, so another one we could have here would be a F, E, D, C, B, A, uh, H, G. So that would be in the counterclockwise direction for the outer. And then we can look at the inner one. So the inner one, let's consider some for that. So we have A, B, C, D, but then we go with the H, G, F, E. We could also have B, C, D. So B, C, D, and then we go up to H, G, F, E. A, and we could also do a reverse of this, like G, H, D, C, B, A, E, F. And you can see that all of these are representing the same Eulerian circuit. It's just counterclockwise or clockwise direction, and that's for the inner one. So those are a bunch of examples with pictures of Eulerian circuits and what it means to be the same Eulerian circuit. And why are we interested in Eulerian circuits? Well, people have been interested in them for hundreds of years, literally since at least 1735, or maybe, maybe I mean at most, because it could have been before then. So the bridges of Konigsberg. So there are a bunch of bridges in the city, Konigsberg, and the goal of a oiler back then was, or one of the goals was to find a tour 
that cross each bridge exactly once. And if you think about this, since we don't know anything about the bridges here, we can just think of them as a bunch of edges in some graph. And, and so this is really just finding an Eulerian, a Eulerian path in the graph. So we're not necessarily requiring with the bridges of Konigsberg for it to be a circuit, because this tour here, it's not saying find a tour that starts and ends at the same place. But if we had that extra requirement, that would be exactly a Eulerian circuit. A Eulerian path is like a Eulerian circuit, except it does not have to start and end at the same vertex. So Eulerian path is uh, less restrictive. We're gonna focus on the Eulerian circuits in today's video though. So if you found a Eulerian circuit of the graph on the bridges, that would give you the tor that Euler was looking for. But even if you found a less restrictive Eulerian trail, which is the same as Eulerian path, on the vertices, that would also give such a tour on these bridges. One other thing I'm going to mention before we look at some more modern applications of Eulerian circuits is Eulerian graphs. And what does it mean to be a Eulerian graph? It just means that it has a Eulerian circuit. So when you hear the word Eulerian graph, it just means that the graph has some Eulerian circuit. And, and calling something Eulerian graph, it's, it doesn't have to do with Eulerian paths. It has to do with Eulerian circuits. So I'm going to underline that. So that's why we're focusing on Eulerian circuits, because, because we're talking about Eulerian graphs here. And in order to be Eulerian graph, you have to have Eulerian circuit, but also Eulerian circuits have some interesting applications. And let's look at those on the next slide. So one application is in bioinformatics and you can use Eulerian circuits to reconstruct DNA sequences from only having fragments of the original sequence. Another interesting application is in circuit design. So one of the most popular methods for gate design and circuits is called CMOS, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. And in order to find an optimal logic gate ordering in these CMOS circuits, you can construct a graph representing the circuit and find a Eulerian circuit in that graph. One other application I'll mention, this one is a application that's been around for a long time. And in mail delivery, if you try to find a route that doesn't retrace any of the previous steps, and you're thinking of the delivery where the streets are edges of a graph, then in order to not retrace any previous steps, you can just find a Eulerian circuit in that graph. And it is a circuit here because we're trying to start and end at the same place. Since since we wanna we wanna start and end at the parking lot, like where we where we park the, the mail vehicle. So there's a pretty simple characterization for Eulerian graphs, graphs that have a Eulerian circuit. And we're going to state this for connected graphs. And if you think about it, it's pretty simple to see what it should be for, for disconnected graphs. And I'm going to leave that as a problem to you. So the problem is just generalize 
the characterization to all graphs. And we're gonna do the most of the work here. We're going to do this for connected graphs. And when I say all graphs, I mean all simple graphs. So almost all the graphs we're talking about in this course are simple graphs. We might really close to the end of the course talk about some graphs that are not simple. But for now, we're only talking about simple ones. So we're gonna prove this characterization for connected graphs. You can generalize it to disconnected ones. And what we're proving is that a graph has a Eulerian circuit. In other words, a graph is a Eulerian graph if and only if every vertex has even degree. Since this is an if and only if, we have two directions of the proof. One direction is gonna be a lot shorter than the other one. The forward direction is the faster one. So for the forward direction, we can take a Eulerian circuit of our graph. So the forward direction, we have some simple connected graph and it has a Eulerian circuit. And we're trying to prove that if it has a Eulerian circuit, then it has a ver every vertex with even degree. So since it has some Eulerian circuit, we can just take some Eulerian circuit in that graph. There might be a lot of them, but we'll just fix one of them. We'll call it C. And we'll use this circuit to count the degrees of the vertices in our graph. And in order to count the degrees of the vertices, we can just start all degrees at zero. And then each time that C passes through a vertex, it increases the degree of that vertex by two because there's an edge from the previous vertex to that vertex, which is giving one to the degree. And then there's an edge out of that vertex to the next vertex in the circuit. And that adds one to the, to the degree as well. So we get plus one plus one, that adds two in total to the, to the degree of the vertex. And we're starting all the degrees at zero. And each time we go through a vertex on our circuit, we're adding two to the degree of that vertex. And so each time we update the degrees of the vertices of our graph, the degrees are staying even. Because when they're all zero, all of them are even. And when we add two to one of them, that one stays even and all the rest of them are still even. So all the degrees stay even the whole Eulerian circuit. And to the completion of the circuit, everything stays even. So that means at the end, when we've counted all the degrees in total, all of them are even. So that was the forward direction. So if we have a Eulerian circuit, then all the degrees are even. We get that pretty quickly, just using the Eulerian circuit and count the, counting the degrees in order of the uh, vertices slash edges along the circuit. So now we got to do the backward direction. And here's the whole statement that we're proving. A simple connected graph has a Eulerian circuit if and only if every vertex has even degree. So for the backward direction, we need to prove that if every vertex has even degree, then this simple connected graph has a Eulerian circuit. So we suppose G is a simple connected graph in which every vertex has even degree. And we'll do a proof by contradiction. So we'll suppose that G is a simple connected graph in which every vertex has even degree. And this graph has the fewest number of edges among all such graphs that do not have Eulerian circuits. So we're trying to prove that all of these graphs that are simple connected graphs with even degree have Eulerian circuits. So if there's any graph that doesn't have Eulerian circuits, then we can pick such a graph with the fewest number of edges. And that's gonna be our graph G. And we're gonna to try to get a contradiction here to show that such a G cannot exist. Now we know G has every vertex of even degree. Also, G is a connected graph. That means that there's no vertices of degree zero and they have to have even degree. So it means their degree is at least two. 
So the minimum degree of G is at least two. Earlier in this class, we proved that every acyclic graph is one degenerate. In other words, every subgraph of an acyclic graph has some vertex of degree at most one. Since we know that G has minimum degree at least two, we know that G cannot be acyclic. So G must have a cycle. Now, suppose that W is a maximum length closed walk in G. So closed walk, it means it passes through distinct edges and it starts and ends at the same vertex. How do we know that W exists, such a W that starts and ends at the same vertex and passes through distinct edges? It's because G has a cycle. And since she has a cycle, we can pick a maximum length closed walk in G. So the cycle gives us a closed walk and we might have an even longer closed walk than that. So we're gonna pick a longest possible closed walk. And again, it's possible there'll be multiple longest possible closed walks. We're just gonna pick one of them, one of the longest possible ones. And then we're going to remove that closed walk W from G. So we're going to delete its edges from G. And we'll say that H is the graph obtained from G by deleting the edges of W. And I claim then that every vertex in H must have even degree. Why is that? Well, W when we remove the edges of W, we're going to remove an even degree from each vertex. So we're moving an even number from the degree of each vertex. So the reason for this is the same as the reason up here. So up here, we started all the degrees at zero. And then as we went through this Eulerian circuit, which was a closed walk. Each time we updated the degrees, we added two to a single vertex's degree. Down here, it's analogous. We start with all the degrees as even numbers, and then we remove this closed walk W. And each time we go through a vertex in W, we can subtract two from the degree of that vertex. So it's completely analogous. It's just, we're subtracting two instead of adding two. But the good thing is subtracting two still keeps the degrees even of all the vertices. So the new graph that we get from deleting the edges of W, this graph we call H, it also has even degree. And H possibly might not be connected. So we'll say that D is some connected component of H. And D, since it's a connected component of H, and since every vertex of H has even degree, we know that every vertex in D has even degree. And D has fewer edges than G. So D must have a Eulerian circuit. Why is that? Well, that was because this graph G up here, G, when we defined it, we said that it had the fewest possible number of edges among all graphs in which every vertices have even degree that do not have Eulerian circuits. So it had to have the minimal number of edges for a graph that doesn't have Eulerian circuit, but every vertex has even degree. And D has fewer edges than G and it has every vertex of even degree. So it must have Eulerian circuit. Otherwise it would contradict the existence of G. So G has Eulerian circuit and we'll name it Q. And D, this connected component. We know that since it's a connected component of the graph obtained by removing W from G, that D must have some vertex 
in common with W. And why is this? This is because G is connected. And we can think about this for a second. So we have W, W is some closed walk here. And then we have possibly some connected components. So G might be the only connected component. And if D is the only connected component of G minus W, then in that case, there has to be some vertex in D that's also in W because the original graph G was connected. And W we obtained only by removing some edges from the original graph. So we didn't remove vertices from the original graph. So if we remove W and we're only left with a single connect component, it means that D has to have all of the vertices of W. Now, if we're left with multiple connected components, so say we have some D prime. Since there's multiple connected components, there's no, there's no edge between the components. So that that's not meant to be crossing edges. That's, there's no edge there. So maybe, maybe I'll just erase that and write no edge. So that might be unclear. So no edge between them, between the com components, because they're distinct connect components of the graph obtained by removing W. So it means that that D prime must also have some vertex in common with W because the original graph is connected. So any of these connect components of the graph obtained by removing W has some vertex in common with W. And we're gonna use that vertex to build another Eulerian circuit. So we'll take, we'll take W, W is this closed walk. And we can make a larger closed walk by using the D. So D, we said, has a Eulerian circuit Q. So we'll take W, we'll take this vertex in common that it has with D, which is V, and then we'll draw the Eulerian circuit Q. So here's Q, and that's Eulerian circuit on D. And then we can take a larger closed walk here so not, not necessarily a Eulerian circuit. It'll only be a Eulerian circuit of G if D was the only connect component of G minus W. But here's one closed walk we can do. And this goes around W and then it goes around Q. So that, that was the direction we went. Not that the clockwise or counterclockwise direction even matters. And what's the problem with that? We have this closed walk. It includes all of W. It also includes all of Q. And W was a maximum length closed walk in G. And that's the problem here because W was supposed to be the maximum length closed walk in G. And here we've built a longer closed walk in G. And so we have a contradiction here because we found a walk, a closed walk in G that's longer than the maximum length closed walk. So we got a contradiction. And the contradiction, we obtained that by assuming that there existed some simple connected graph in which every vertex 
has even degree and it did not have a Eulerian circuit. That was a contradiction by assuming that. So that tells us that every symbol connected graph in which every vertex has even degree must have a Eulerian circuit. So that's our contradiction and our conclusion. So we got the if and only if there, we finished the backward direction. Okay. And we can now uh, discuss an algorithm to find Eulerian circuits. If you have a graph that you know has Eulerian circuit. So if you have a Eulerian graph, in other words, if it's a connected graph, you have some graph in which every vertex has even degree. So this algorithm defines some Eulerian circuit in such a graph. We're gonna assume it's connected and it has Eulerian circuit. And then we're just going to pick a vertex in our graph, an arbitrary vertex, call it V. And we're gonna start at V and we're gonna do a walk on our graph G. And we're gonna keep on walking and only using edges that we have not used. So once we use an edge, we won't use it anymore in a walk. And we'll keep on walking until we can't walk anymore. And our walk, we can think of it like we thought about the circuits on the other slide. So each time that we arrive and then leave a vertex on this walk, it'll subtract two from the degree because we're removing the edges that we use. We can't use them anymore in the walk. And we're only going to stop walking if we get stuck. And we know since G is connected and has the Eulerian circuit, we know that all the vertices have even degree. So we know we can't get stuck at any vertex except for B because all the vertices have even degree and we're subtracting two from the, de the degree of each vertex that we pass through as we remove the edges that we use. So in order to get stuck at a vertex besides B, it would have to have odd degree because we would have to arrive there, but then we wouldn't have any choice of an edge to leave out of there. So since all of them start with even degree, you can't get stuck at any of them except for V. So our closed walk has to end at V. So W is gonna be a circuit that starts and ends at V, not necessarily a Eulerian circuit, just a circuit, it's a closed walk. And we can check and see if W has all the edges of our graph G. If it does, then we're done. Otherwise, we find some vertex, we'll call it V prime in W that has some edge not in W. And we know that since G is connected, if W does not have all the edges of G, then there must exist some V prime that has some edge that's not in W. And V prime has to be a vertex that is passed through in W. So then we find a circuit on the graph G minus W that starts and ends at V prime. And we do that the exact same way that we found the circuit that started and ended at V. So we start at V prime and we just pick an edge in the graph G minus W that contains V prime. And we go to the other vertex in that edge and we just keep on walking in, in that connected component of G minus W until we arrive back at V prime. And since our graph is connected, we can keep on doing this. We can keep on finding vertices whose edges are not included in the walk that started and ended at V and the walk that started and ended at V prime. And we can keep on obtaining more and more closed walks that, that start and end at the same vertex because they're closed walks. And we know that W, we have W right here, It started and ended at V. 
it also had this vertex V prime that had some other edge not in W. And so we were able to make a Eulerian, we were able to make a closed walk that started and ended at V prime. And note that we can combine these walks to make a larger closed walk. And then that might be our whole graph or we might find another vertex that has some edge that's not contained in either of these walks or contained in the larger walk, we could say, because that one contains all the edges of the smaller ones. And we can call that one, we'll say, V prime prime. And it has a large closed walk down here. And so we can make a larger closed walk consisting of all the edges of that one with all the edges of the previous ones. And we just keep on going like this until we get all of the edges of our graph. And that that gives us a Eulerian circuit. So that gave us a polynomial time algorithm to find a Eulerian circuit in a Eulerian graph. And the problem of recognizing whether a graph is Eulerian, so recognizing whether a graph has a Eulerian circuit, we see that that's pretty simple for connected graphs. All you have to do is check whether every vertex has even degree. So you can just count the number of edges that contain each vertex. And the problem that I gave you to generalize the characterization to, to disconnected graphs, that also gives a very simple polynomial time algorithm for determining whether or not a graph is Eulerian. And and this algorithm we just discussed for finding a Eulerian circuit in a connected graph. This also will generalize to finding Eulerian circuits in any graphs that have Eulerian circuits. Now, I think that brings us to the end of this video, but we'll be talking more about other special kinds of circuits and graphs in the next video. And those two bullets are just what I said before with the, with the picture. So I drew those. So nothing more to say there really, except thanks for watching.